Illustrators. Welcome to my uh, color work series. In this particular episode, I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to do short row knitting. Um, now, if you're already familiar with uh, short row knitting or if you just want to jump straight to where I actually demonstrate this, if you look in the description section, there are some timestamps. And if you click on the timestamp, it will take you right to the section of the video where I actually start demonstrating uh, short row knitting. Um, I will also be demonstrating this in both continental as well as English. So uh, for those of you who knit English style, um, I'll demonstrate that later on in the video. And of course, those who, who knit continental, that will be towards the beginning of the video. Now, this short, short row knitting is a really great way to add some dimension to your stripe work. So stripe work is basically where you are creating stripes in your knit, in your knitting. Um, by simply changing colors. So in this example, I'm actually working from two different balls of wool. I'm working with this one here, which is what's currently attached to my needle, and then I'm alternating it with a different uh, color of wool. That's a, it's actually a variegation. Um, so when you're doing your short, short row knitting, in essence what you're doing is you are adding rows at specific intervals within a particular stripe. And that's what creates these these valleys and these uh, dips that you see here. Um, and this is actually uh, the Lizard Ridge um, Afghan. Uh, that is what this pattern is from. Now you notice that the work is puckering. So you've got like these, uh, like an egg crate effect. And you can actually see it. It's very pronounced here in this one square that I've already finished. So you've got all these puckers. And what's going on is because you are adding rows within your stripe or within that section, you are creating material that has nowhere to go but up or down. So that's it's up here, but if you flip it over, uh, it's down, kind of, like, kind of like an egg crate. Now, you can actually get this to lay flat as it does in this one. So this one, you see all those puckers are actually completely flat. And I've done that by simply blocking uh, the, the actual square after finishing it. So this one I'll be blocking and then it will look uh, like this one flat. Um, now this is 100% wool so the blocking technique that I use and that I like to use is the wet method and that's where you met it, wet it um, and remove some of the water by blotting it with a towel and then tacking it down and then it air dries flat like this. Of course the stockinette stitch um, which is what this is based on does have that tendency to scroll up on the edges like here and of course when you block your work uh, that removes that now, if you're using acrylic yarn uh, for this, which of course you can certainly do, um, when you block the work, um, you typically want to do a steam block, and that's where you take your iron, and you don't touch the iron to the, the work because of course it, you'll melt it, but you just use the steam and then push the steam out and then flatten it and then tack it down. Um, wool is really works, or, I'm sorry, water really works best with wool because it's actually a fiber and it will cause those fibers to stay in those uh, in that position. Whereas with acrylic yarn, you don't have any natural fibers, and so the steaming is, is in effect what causes it to lay flat. So in essence, what a short row is, is in between, so typically when you do knitting normally, you just knit all the way down and then you turn your work and then purl all the way back, and that's a regular row of knitting. Short row knitting is where you're knitting across or purling up across and then you stop at some point in your work and then at the next stitch you wrap the working yarn around that next stitch and then slip it back onto the needle and then you turn your work and then go in the opposite direction and then you repeat that process until you create a particular design in your work as I have here. So with this one, the short rows, you're going back and forth and with each turn you are reducing the stitch by one and I'll show you that in the actual demonstration. But that is what actually creates these humps, if you will, or these valleys and um, ridges in your work. And it, like I said, it's really great for uh, when you're doing stripe work to give it that flair. And of course, when you do short row knitting, you do typically want to contrast um, because the contrast is what in, in a combination with the short rows is what creates the, uh, the valleys in the um, the, the actual design of your pattern. So that's what's great about that. Okay, so in this demonstration, of course, I'm doing um, continental uh, demonstration this first time. The pattern calls for you to purl 12 stitches 
and then wrap and turn. So that's your short row. So you, you're only going in 12 stitches and then you're going to turn your work and then continue in the opposite direction. So that's what I'm going to do here. I always start the first couple of stitches English style and then I'll switch over to Continental for the rest of the uh, stitches. All right, so we've got two stitches here and then what we're going to do is continue purling out 12 stitches. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So in essence, this is really a counting game that you're dealing with when you're, when you're doing short rows. So now what we're going to do is we need to wrap this working yarn around this next stitch right here. So the way that you do that is you set, you temporarily set your yarn in the knit position and then you slip that stitch purl wise, bring the yarn back to the purl position and then put that stitch back onto the left needle and then you turn your work. And that's called um, wrap and turn. So we've wrapped the yarn around this stitch right here and now we can knit back in the opposite direction to create another short row. So now the pattern calls for you to knit forward eight or to, to knit the next eight stitches. And the other thing too is when you wrap your stitch, don't strangle your stitch like this. So that's kind of strangling the stitch. You just want it to give it some slack a little bit like that and then begin your knitting. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And so what we're doing is we're creating this little hump here. And the way we can create the hump is we reduce the number of stitches every time we we do a wrap and turn. So we've done eight stitches and now you're going to bring the yarn to the, the working yarn to the purl position, to the front of your work, slip the, the stitch that's on the left needle, the next one, so that would be like stitch nine if you would, slip it purl wise and then bring your working yarn back to the knit position and then put that stitch back onto that working needle and then you turn your work. So that's a wrap and turn. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back and create another short row in the opposite direction, but this time we're only going to do seven stitches, so seven purl stitches, because that's one less than the eight that we've just done. So that's one, and again, being careful not to strangle that first, that wrap right here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. And now we're going to do another wrap and turn. So you bring the yarn to the knit position, slip the next stitch purl wise, and then bring the yarn back to the purl position and then slip that stitch back on the needle and turn your work. And so what you can start to see now are the wraps that are kind of making these steps because you're kind of stepping up to the top of this ridge that you're making. And so now we're going to go back six stitches. So that, again, that's one less than what we previously did. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And then bring your yarn forward slip the next stitch purlwise, then bring it back. Because what you're doing that way is you're wrapping. That's how you wrap a stitch. It's the, the, the slip wrap slip method because you're slipping it off and then back on. So now we're going to go in the opposite direction, five stitches. So we're going to purl five. So that's one less than what we just previously did. That's one, two, three, four, one more, five. And then move your yarn to the knit position, slip the next stitch, bring the yarn forward, and then slip it back on. 
and then turn your work. And then we're going to do one more. So if you've noticed in the, the pattern here, when we're knitting, we're always knitting an odd number of stitches. So we did eight, six, now we're getting ready to do four. When you are on the wrong side of your work purling, you are actually purling odd numbers of stitches. So seven and five. So this last one that we're doing here, we're going to be knitting four. So that's one, two, three, four. Move the yarn forward, slip the stitch, next stitch, bring it back and around and then turn your work. So what we've done is we've just created one little mountain here. We've got two more to do. So now that we're done here, we need to then move further out. So we're still doing short rows. This next short row is going to be longer than any we've done thus far. It's actually going to be 20 stitches, but we're not going all the way out here. So it's still technically considered a short row. But we need to get to the middle of our work so that we can create the next ridge of the next hump. And when you go over, because we're going to be encountering some stitches that have a... Uh, a slip wrap, or I'm sorry, a yarn wrapped around them, a working yarn wrapped around them. I'm going to show you what to do when you encounter those because it's it's very important. So we're going to go one, two, because we just knitted four, three, four. And now we're encountering the first of three wrapped stitches. And you can clearly see them on the other side as well. But you can't just purl over these next three stitches because if you do you're going to have large holes in your work where these wraps were. So what you're going to do is I'm going to move this yarn in the back so you can see because we're still purling but mm -hmm. I want you to see what I'm getting ready to do. So you slip the stitch that has the wrap around it and then you pick up the wrap and then you put the stitch back on with the wrap and then Curl them both together. So that's five. This so next one is six. Again, slip the stitch, pick up the wrap, put the stitch back on, and then purl both of them together. And then we've got one more to do like that. Slip the stitch, pick up the wrap, put them both back on the needle, or put the other stitch back on the needle and then purl them both together. So that's seven. So now we have 13 more stitches to go out to complete this short row to get to the middle of the work so that we can do this again. So that's eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so now we are ready to start the short rows to create the middle hump. So what you're going to do is move, well, the, we were purling, so move this, the yarn, the working yarn to the back, slip the next stitch purlwise, and then bring it forward back into the purl position, and then turn your work. And so now I'll go ahead and demonstrate this um, English style for, for you English style knitters. So now we're going to knit eight, one, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight. And now we need to wrap and turn our work. So you move the yarn forward into the purl position, slip the yarn purlwise, no, sorry, slip the next stitch purlwise, bring it back, and then slip that stitch back on, and then turn your work. And now we're going to purl in the opposite direction but reduce the number of stitches by one. So we're going to purl back seven. So that's one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven. Move your yarn to the back of your work, flip the next stitch purlwise, and then bring your yarn forward, and then put that stitch back onto your needle, and then turn your work. And so already you can start to see the wrap. So there's the first one down here, and then that is the second one, because you have three on each side of the hump, three wraps. And so now we're going to go back in the opposite direction, knitting, but by one less. So that's six that we're going to knit. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. Bring your yarn forward, slip the next stitch purlwise, and then move the yarn to the back of your work, and then don't forget to put that stitch back on that's what completes the wrap and then turn your work and now we're going to and again we're on the wrong side so we know we're going to do an odd number of stitches so we just did six knit stitches so now we have to do five purl stitches bring your yarn to the back slip the next stitch bring your yarn forward and then put that stitch back on and turn your work just like that and now we're going to knit four back in the other direction again that's one less than what we already did did on the wrong side so that's one two three four move your yarn forward slip the next stitch move your yarn to the back and then slip that stitch back onto the left needle and then turn your work so <clears throat> now we've completed two of the three humps and so now we have the third hump to do and so what we're going to do now is purl back 20 so we're doing another short row because we'll actually come just three stitches shy of finishing out this this full row so technically it's still a short row so we're going to knit 20 I'm sorry purl 20 so that's one two three Four. Now, here's the first of three stitches with the wrap around them. So we do have to pick up the wrap for these next three stitches, because if you don't, and then purl them together, if you don't do that, you'll have holes where these wraps occurred, or where you did your wrap and turn. So that's seven total now. And then eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And so when you do the pattern, you get used to what things need to look like when you're coming, you know, doing your counting. So for this particular pattern, I know that I have to have three stitches left on this left needle. If I have four or if I have two, then I've miscounted somewhere in here. So you'll have to, to unknit and then correct um, where maybe you counted out 19 instead of 20, or you counted out 21 instead of 20, but you you start to get a feel for what your work should look like when you when you make many of these. So we've done 20 stitches, so now what we're going to do is bring the yarn to the back of your work, slip the next stitch purlwise, bring your yarn forward, put that stitch back on your needle, and then turn your work. And then now we're going to finish the last of the three humps, so we've done this one, here's the second one, and now we'll do the third one. So I'm going to go ahead and do the third one, and then when I come back, I'll show you um, how to knit back 
too, because when you knit back, you're just doing regular row knitting. You're not doing short row knitting. So in other words, you're knitting across the entire span of your needle. And I'll show you what to do when you encounter a stitch with a, um, a wrap around it and how you handle that um, in the knit direction. Okay, so I finished all of the ridges or the humps. So there's three total and I'm at the end of my work. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit all the way back for a regular row of knitting. And I'll show you what to do when you encounter a stitch with its uh, slips. So we've already taken care of all of the slips, or the, the wrap and turns that have occurred that you see on this side, because there's, there's um, it's symmetric on each side. There's three on each side. So we've always handled the three that are on the this side or the, the right side of your hump when we were purling. So every time we did a, a short row involving purling and we came to those stitches that we slipped the uh, and we purled both the wrap stitch and the regular stitch together. And you can see that there, those three. And there are those three right there where we did that. But we haven't done the ones on the opposite side yet. And that's what we'll do when we knit back across. So we've already purled um, half of them and now we need to knit the others. So again, we don't have to do anything here because this wrap and the stitch have already been purled together as you can see. So we just knit it as usual. So now we're getting to the very top of the first hill. It kind of plateaus out. And now we're starting to descend back down the other side of the hill. And that's where we need to take care of these wraps here. Because again, if you just knit across, you're going to have huge holes in your work, at the, in this portion of your work. So what you do is you slip that stitch purlwise, and then you pick up the wrap, and then put the slip stitch back onto the left needle, and then knit them both together. So slip the stitch purlwise, pick up the wrap, put the stitch back onto the left needle, knit them both together. We've got one more to do just like that. Pick up the slip stitch, I'm sorry, the wrap stitch and knit them both together. And now we're going to knit along some more. And now we're getting ready to go back up the hill for the second hump. And these three stitches have already been purled along with their wraps, so we don't have to do anything with those, just business as usual, knitting up the hill to the top of the hill, over the top, and now we're getting ready to come down the other side. And now we have to pick up those three wraps and knit them with their designated stitches. So slip it off. And then knitting as usual on the way across. We're going up the hill so we don't have to worry about these three because they've already been purled. Make sure I did that right. On the other side with their core or to their corresponding stitches. Now we're going over the top. And now we're starting to descend back down the other side. And so we're going to pick up those wrap stitches and knit them with their corresponding stitch. And then the last three stitches are just knitted normally. And then the pattern calls for you to turn your work and purl all the way down the other side. So as you can see, it's starting to create this wavy, this wave effect. And again, you can see it much better here in this one that's been blocked flat. And you can actually see where the wrap stitches are. So for example, here, you can see the one, two, three on that side. And then typically to see the other three on the other side, you it's easier sometimes to see them on the, the purled side, which are these right here, those three. 
So that is short row knitting. Uh, thank you for watching this. I do appreciate it. Uh, please do check out the other uh, videos in this series. And I also do some other techniques um, within this. I demonstrate those in other videos, like for example, how to change colors, um, how to weave in your ends when you do change colors. And changing colors is a really good effect to um, to contrast or to show the difference between those ridges that otherwise you might not see if you use the same color. So again, this is um, more into the lines of stripe, uh, stripe work when you do your knitting, but it's giving some flair uh, to that. So thank you for watching. Please do provide comments and feedback. I always appreciate them. And um, please also remember to subscribe to my video channel for other uh, knitting tutorials. Again, thanks for watching.